Hey, according to a government committee report, the National Science Foundation is funding the development of automated tools to censor online speech at scale. This is the conclusion reached in the 80-page interim staff report of the Committee on the Judiciary and the Select Subcommittee on the Weaponization of the Federal Government, United States House of Representatives, uh, released on February 5, 2024, titled, quote, The Weaponization of the National Science Foundation, How NSF is Funding the Development of Automated Tools to Censor Online Speech at Scale and Trying to Cover Up Its Actions, unquote. I'm not going to, I've read the whole 80-page report here, and I'm not going to go into the attempt to cover things up. Just going to talk only just limited here to what they apparently are doing. So the National Science Foundation is, of course, you know, the civilian arm of DARPA. You know what DARPA is, right? The Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. It's part of the military complex. It's the part that is uh, facing civilian side, right? It's the national security state cloaked in civilian clothes. It's a $10 billion source of university project funding. Believe me, if universities did not get the $10 billion uh, here that they get from the NSF, some of our universities, most they probably all closed. They need that money. This is a gotta have it, gotta have it. Now look at this slide. This slide tells really the whole story I want to tell you today. So the government awards contracts to universities and nonprofit corporations. Their research in turn then is turned into censorship and propaganda software tools. These tools then are deployed and used to collate and tag posts, which are then removed from social media platforms. That's how it works. Now, the Judiciary Report warns this, quote, although any violation of the First Amendment is alarming, the EIP, that's the Election Integrity Partnership, the EIP's effort led to only thousands of Americans' posts being targeted. New technologies could enable a much smaller team to accomplish the same task for millions of posts if not entire narratives, unquote. So they're quite concerned that some of this has already been done and it could be done on a much larger scale and be extremely destructive to liberty in America. The report quotes Mark Andreessen. Now, you might or might not remember him. He's the co-founder of Netscape. He co-creator of the Mosaic browser, which came before a lot of the browsers we have today, Firefox and Chrome and so on. Here's what Mark Andreessen says. AI is highly likely to be the controller for everything in the world. How it is allowed to operate is going to matter perhaps more than anything else has ever mattered. You should be aware of how a small and isolated coterie of partisan social engineers are trying to determine that right now, under cover of the age-old claim that they're protecting you." Unquote. So supposedly those who would deliver us from, quote, disinformation are protecting us. One example of this protection in operation is called WiseDex harnesses the wisdom of crowds as well as AI techniques to select keywords for each claim and provide other information in the claim profile. WiseDex enables fast, comprehensive and consistent enforcement around the world so that harmful misinformation stops reaching big audiences. The tool is described in notes accompanying a slide deck as a means of, quote, externalizing the difficult responsibility of censorship, unquote. Now, according to the Judiciary Report, the University of Michigan received a $750,000 grant from the National Science Foundation to build software able to empower AI, scan and ban artificial intelligence, machine learning powered scripts. Mike Benz stated that the tool is used to categorize claims made online about vaccines, masks, and mandates, and has been used in the creation of a database and the creation of scripts to run on the algorithms at Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok, so that those who dared speak on these topics were tagged and intercepted at the level of the algorithm. So the algorithm, what that means, friends, is... So this is basically software. It's computer programs that basically are designed to uh, gather everything that's said and catalog it and classify it. And if you said something about masks online in the last couple of years, you're probably tagged somewhere. Now, what these people are saying is that externalizing censorship is necessary because, as Rene DiResta at the Stanford Internet Observatory wrote in another set of slide notes, there were, quote, unclear legal authorities, including very real First Amendment questions, unquote. Well, <laughs> that's an understatement. See, because you might remember that the First Amendment to the Constitution prohibits, quote, abridging the freedom of speech, unquote. Now, the people being paid to develop these tools, 
say, of course, the opposite. University of Michigan slide notes again state this, quote, there is widespread agreement Misinformation undermines liberal democracy by eroding the commonly accepted facts that allow society to reach consensus. He goes on to say, our work reestablishes bipartisan consensus on truth and therefore enables platforms to curtail the spread of misinformation, saving modern democracy. Well, hooray, unquote. Now, in case you might wonder if maybe I'm just making this up, let's get something from today's Department of Homeland Security. What do they say misinformation and disinformation is and how should it be treated? Here's a clip from a, an online government training event of the Department of Homeland Security. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Disinformation in 2020, Implications and Tools for Election Officials and the Critical Infrastructure Community. Thank you for being with us today. My name is Benjamin Scribner, and I serve as the Awareness Section Chief in the Stakeholder Engagement Division here at the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, or CISA. Um, I'll briefly just mention, I think uh, many of us will have heard the term mis- and disinformation. Um, and so we, in the, in the playbook, we you know, give a definition for disinformation as false information that's deliberately uh, spread with malicious intent and misinformation that is uh, false information that's spread mistakenly. Um, our approach in giving recommendations to counter um, mis- or disinformation is to think of them as one concept, uh, not because they're the same, but because when an election official or a voter or others might encounter mis- or disinformation, um, they will not be able to tell necessarily the intent <clears throat> or whether it's a disinformation or misinformation incident. So again, those definitions propose that someone gets to abridge free speech by deciding for us what is and is not false information. So then social media companies can act on content based on information provided by these companies that they contract with and then they'll take down posts and, and limit them and so on, and boom, you've got abridged free speech. Now, the situation might be actually quite a bit more serious even than what I've just described, which to me sounds extremely serious, but could it be dramatically worse? Well, let's go back to Mike Benz. In a 2024 interview, Mike Benz said this, AI censorship is not some future threat. It's already here. It's already been here for about six years. It was the great technological game changer that allowed the modern era of internet censorship to happen after 2016. If political elites wanted to kill a narrative online that was trending or a political movement that they opposed, they would have to hire armies of manual censors." Unquote. Now, Ben says that even after hiring tens of thousands of employees, to tag social media posts for censorship, they still couldn't keep up, it wasn't enough. The manual method just needed too many bodies. So that led to the development of these new weapons of, to automate censorship. It, this technology was initially created by DARPA. It uses a technique called natural language processing or NLP, which is a machine learning technique to, that, that takes every word you say, every sentence you write, every paragraph you tweet on Twitter, it all gets analyzed into a into a model that ingests what you say and how it relates and how it's spread to the other people in your network. And they create these vast topographical network maps of, of how a narrative is going viral. So you may have seen some of these. It'll have a picture of a high profile individual and, and, it, and it links out to everybody else who spread that message. And they can create this taxonomy of any narrative in the world, you know, um, uh, vaccine skeptics, uh, mail-in ballot skeptics, climate skeptics, uh, you know, abortion, energy, migration, you name it. This was initially constructed by the Pentagon with funding from the State Department uh, in order to deal with the threat of ISIS recruiting on, on Facebook and Twitter in 2014. All of this goes on to a uh, on, into a back-end text-to-speech transliteration that's used for closed captioning, which means all of that is translated into words. Now, according to Ben's now... It creates for the national security state a real-time heat map of every political movement and of every trending or emerging narrative that's going on in the world. So it was initially created for those national security purposes. But then after, the, after Brexit in the UK and the 2016 election here in the US when they created this Russiagate predicate, all of that came home and they turned these weapons of mass deletion to be able to scan and ban any narrative at scale 
from a foreign national security predicate into a domestic democracy predicate and unleashed it on everyone. And I always bring these things back to a spiritual level because elections come and go, different things happen and change, but what really matters is the spiritual side. In 1521 in Germany, Emperor Charles V issued the Edict of Worms, a command among other things that did what? It banned the writings of Martin Luther. It was censorship, it was state censorship. The protest of the German princes back then a little bit later in 1529, that became the source of the name Protestantism. And we don't hear of that name too much anymore these days, do we? But there is something called Protestantism. The Bible in the book of Revelation foretells an authoritarian power, global in scope, able to enforce its commands and doubtless also its narratives. I mean, take a look at Revelation 13, 14, what, what this power tells uh, there. Look at that. Capability to de-amplify is also the ability to amplify. It's the ability to increase support for an idea as well. A censorship machine is also a propaganda machine. It's able to amplify the popular feeling and the popular demand for something. Friends, dissenters will be unable to buy or sell. Revelation 13, 16 says so. No government in human history has possessed the machinery to enact censorship at scale until now. And there we are. These are solemn and interesting times. Hey friends, if you want to keep up on more of the developments that aren't always highlighted, in fact, often are completely gone around by the main media, just subscribe over here. I'll put the QR code on the screen. I'll put the URL you can go to and subscribe to this little newsletter, the Horizon Watch newsletter. And we come out every, every four to eight weeks with a newsletter uh, sharing with you quick videos like this about current developments. You'll want to be tuned in on that. Share it with your friends, your friends who are asleep. We need to be awake in these, these crazy times.